Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the live radar then we'll go for the GFS, the GEM, the E7DF and then we'll finish up with the GFS ensembles and the UKMS office run as well. Now we've got a lot of high pressure out over the next week or two. It can be blocking our weather and we're even seeing some signs and I'll show you the 6 GFS run where if we get that blocking in the right place we could even be seeing some early season winteriness especially to the northern half of the uk now it is only a couple runs outlier runs but the potential is there and i'll show you that latest uh, or the six edge gfs and we'll the, show the latest gfs in a minute but do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and do remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description so if you do have a look at the live radar, you can see that uh, weather front that has been sort of peppering Western Scotland is petering away now and slowly moving eastwards. There's a bit of drizzly rain moving through to the northwest, heading into Yorkshire at the moment um, with some more cloud extended with that. And it should slowly fizzle away as it meets the high pressure. And it does look like generally things are going to be really quite dry over the next uh, week or two, especially in the south. North, still a bit more uncertain, as there at times could be some weather fronts encroaching, but it still does look pretty decent. So we do go run through the GFS, we'll have a look at the 12Z first, and then we'll have a look at the colder 6Z run. So if we do go through the 12Z run, you can see a lot of high pressure around at the moment, early next week. We could be pulling in a bit of a chilly and northerly wind, could mean temperatures are going to be a little bit down, especially in the eastern half of the country, we could even see maybe the odd frost. Beyond that, high pressure continues to control our weather. At times, we can see brief weather fronts move through, but again, they're going to be sort of patchy light rain, maybe a bit thicker cloud here or there, and the high pressure just really sticks around. Again, to the northern half, we could see something breaking through, but nothing massive at this stage. Beyond day 10, low pressure does eventually break through, but you can see we've got some northern blocking up towards Greenland, which we highlighted in the video yesterday. And as we've seen the 6Z run, this blocking towards day 10 provides us with some cold and wintriness however on the 12z it doesn't quite come off we do have a plunge of cold air heading into scandinavia doesn't quite make its way to the uk um, as it does get shifted away by the jet stream but as we'll see with the 6z in a minute run by run things are changing and we could maybe flip back to something colder in tomorrow's run so we have to keep an eye on that right towards the end of the run more of a westerly regime as that blocking does um, slowly break down so if we do have a look at the 6Z, it's going to be very similar up until day 10 minutes. What's happened with that Greenland blocking that change uh, that changes sort of the outlook towards the end of October? You can see, again, high pressure around, a bit of a brief northerly sort of flow, some cooler conditions. And then we maintain that sort of blocking up towards Greenland. And it's a bit stronger toward day 10 than we saw on the 12Z. Now, again, these models are just taking the latest data. So the 6Z and the 12Z are likely to be wrong at this sort of uh, time frame. May, uh, they should generally get the patterns right, but with the air masses and stuff like that, they can be quite, quite, um, they could be quite large differences. So again, we have to take each of these runs with a pinch of salt, but it does show the potential. As we head towards day 10, we see that green blocking maintains its strength, unlike this 12Z which breaks it down and what this does is it brings this big low pressure through which has really warm moist air on its eastern edge very cold air on its northern and western edge uh, as it sweeps through we go into a direct northerly wind now at this stage you can see the minus five line is getting down to northern England and that generally is what required for snow now it is sort of end of October so again daylight time may only be confined to hills but overnight, we could be seeing snow for the northern half of the country. Um, and as we head right towards the end of the run, we could be even seeing a sort of snowstorm. Um, now, I'm not saying there's going to be a snowstorm, but in this scenario, you can see warm air coming up from the south. Majority of the United Kingdom is just going to be having cold rain. Um, but you can see on the northern edge of this low pressure system, running into that very cold Arctic air over northern Scotland, over the mountains, we could see some snow. And you can see that warm rain never really quite reaches Scotland before it pulls away. Um, so it just, just shows you, with that slight shift and that blocking, we could be seeing even some early wintriness um, in the season. 
So if we do go through the precipitation, now we're just going to briefly go through the end of the 6 one just to show you what the potential is um, with this sort of pattern. Uh, so if we, yeah, if we go right towards the end of the run and we head towards day 10, you can see mostly rain. But as we head towards the 20th of October, as that cold air starts to come in, you can start to see some snow coming in across the mountains. Again, very marginal, um, but the potential for some snow. Um, again, that snow maintains over the mountains and showery generally. But as we head towards sort of 330, 336 hours, as that weather front heads northwards, hits that cold air, we see some big snow potential over northern Scotland. Now again, there's only one run, but it does show you the potential and eventually does clear away and we see things um, sort of peter out. If we had a look at, look at snow depth, you could see 20, 30 centimetres possible over the mountains in Scotland. Um, again, all really depends on the air mass. And if we do have a look at AM50 HP and thickness levels, you can see right at this, uh, you can see three or four degrees at 850 HP in the south, but over Scotland, getting down to minus seven or maybe minus eight degrees at 850 HPA. Big 10 degree difference. And again, all depends on that blocking and how much it shifts this colder air towards the UK in the longer term. Now, of course, it all can change, but I'm just showing the one scenario that we have seen on the latest GFS or on the 6Z GFS operational, and we're still kind of seeing hints on the 12Z, just not quite coming off. So very interesting to see that. So now we'll have a look at the other runs, see if they do show anything with this blocking at the end of the runs. You can see generally high pressure is around. And then we see that high pressure slowly starts to topple away, potentially pulling in cold and northerly airflows for time. And then right towards the end of the run, we see a bit more of a different outcome on the GEM. We could be going into a bit of a warmer spell uh, with southerly winds. So... This is the predicament we have. Um, we've got quite a volatile jet stream with a lot of blocking around. Where the blocks place themselves it can massively change the air masses, especially in October, where we still have a lot of warm air to our south, but equally have a lot of cold air to our north. So very much up in the air at this stage. Um, and you can see why this latest GFS could be going, uh, GM could be going warm at day 10. Um, but again, I suspect both the GFS 6Z and the GM 12Z are both outliers in the ensembles uh, they're both at, the, at each of the extreme ends it just shows you the uncertainty we do have if we have a look at the ecm wf you can see again very similar over the next week or so with the high pressure around then we get that brief potentially another brief northerly winds potentially some chilly air pushing in through the eastern half then right towards the end of the run we do start to see the potential of a bit of blocking towards greenland but again, um, it's a good few days behind what we saw in the GFS, which pulled off that colder condition. So we'll have to keep an eye on this over the coming days. But at this stage, all the main models are going for something quite slightly different. All generally have the black, that blocking pattern around, but they all have it in slightly different positions, which is massively changing what we could be seeing. So all eyes on what's going to happen over the next few days in regards to this blocking around day 10 um, and what happens to the high pressure that's sitting over the top of the UK. Um, as you've seen by these models can have drastically um, different uh, drastically different outcomes. So we do have a look at the GFS on Sombols. Now the 12Z haven't fully come out yet. Um, but we've gone out to about day 12, day 13, and you can see a lot of scatter. But generally over the next sort of six, seven days, it looks around, or maybe below average temperatures. We do have that northerly flow, very minimal precipitation around, maybe a few showers here or there uh, coming off the North Sea, but generally things are not looking too bad. As we're towards the sort of 16th, 17th of October, you can see a lot of uncertainty. Some ensemble members going cold and remaining cold, others going a bit warmer, um, but still a lot of uncertainty. And then right towards the end of the run, more precision, precipitation signals pick up and we still have a lot of uncertainty if you go to the 6z ensemble runs you can see right towards the end where we don't quite get to on the 12z we do have those colder outliers coming out getting down to minus 5 a of thpa and remember the operational gfs run reports snow to scotland that cold air never touched southern england so it's very very um small margins um especially at this time of year still generally got some high precipitation so we have to keep an eye on that if we do have a look at Glasgow, if we have a look at the 6Z run, you can see generally things are around um, or slightly below average in the next few days, then above average for the next sort of week. And then right towards the end of the run, around 21st of October, you can see maybe five or six ensemble members. So maybe a quarter to a fifth 
So still sort of 20-25% of the ensemble members. Going down to around minus 5 at Angel Future, 50 HPA with precipitation annuals, the potential for snow. If we have a look at new snow depth, you can see there are some snow spikes right at the end of the run. The operational run doesn't come up on the new snow, snow depth spike, but if it did, it would be quite a high spike as well. But you can see there is the potential. Not guaranteed to happen, but we are starting to get this to the time of year where if we do get one of these northerly winds, we do get that jet stream shifted southwards, you never know what could happen, especially in the north. For the south, I must admit, it's probably at least four to six weeks. Um, at, right, right now, it's probably about four to six weeks too early to be seeing any winteriness at all. Um, as we really would need something exceptional to get that sort of air mass to the south. But got to keep eyes on these models. Um, and especially what we've seen in the stratosphere. Um, if you do check out my winter sort of look ahead I did earlier this week. Um, if you haven't seen that already, we have a look at the stratosphere in that, and you, and you can see in that the stratosphere is, uh, or the polar vortex is, is very weak um, in the stratosphere, um, and is forecast to maintain pretty weak. And we can even see a Canadian warning, which are warming, which I may do a video um, in the next few days about, um, which could give us um, what could impact our early wintry weather. Uh, or early winter weather. So if we do have a look at the 12Z finally, uh, for the Glasgow, you can see again, a lot of uncertainty in sort of the mid to long range. Again, more precipitation spikes coming up and a lot of uncertainty in the temperatures. Again, majority are going for around average conditions um, or maybe above average conditions, um, especially around sort of 17, 18th, but we still have those five or six going to something a bit cold. It all depends on what happens with that blocking and we have to keep an eye on that. Now, if we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, um, now it doesn't look like it's fully updated yet. Um, uh, yeah, it hasn't fully updated. You can see um, sort of the Saturday afternoon run only goes out um, to about 24 hours, so we have, unfortunately can't see the full uh, three set, uh, three o'clock run. But we'll have a, a look at it anyway, just to give us an idea. Again, showers over the next few days. In Scotland, maybe, but generally elsewhere, pretty dry, and we could see the odd sort of fizzly area of uh, sort of drizzle moving in. And generally, that's going to be in Scotland, as we do have potentially some moisture coming around the high. But generally, most areas are going to be dry apart from northern Scotland. But again, that's not too sort of uh, unfamiliar for this time of year. It is pretty much um, quite likely to rain in Scotland through autumn especially when we've got these warm Atlantic air masses colliding with some cooler air coming from the north, always um, gives the potential for us seeing even drizzle under the high pressure. So if you do have a look at temperatures, finally, you can see today was pretty decent, around sort of 20 uh, degrees high, potentially in a few spots, but mainly around 17, 18, 19. Tomorrow, generally, it's going to be another pleasant day in the south, maybe around 8, 17, 18 degrees. But further north, we start to have chilly air moving in, a bit cooler, low teens, maybe even high single digits. As we head through to Monday afternoon, you can see again a good few degrees down, maybe only 14, 15, maybe 16 degrees. Um, and then by Tuesday time, again, 14, 15 degrees. And finally on Wednesday, again, still chilly around 14, 15 degrees. And if we could move this on another couple of days, we'd start to see that even cooler air coming from the north by the end of the week. So you can see in this video the amount of uncertainty we do have over the next few weeks. Um, don't take every operational run literally. These are all just indicators of what we could be seeing. They are scenarios that we could be seeing. And at this stage, it is up in the air, but there are some potentially wintry uh, scenarios out there. Um, and if you are a snow lover, um, then fingers crossed we do see something like that over the next few weeks. Um, generally, again, as I said earlier, it will be, if we do see anything, it will be over Scotland and over mountains, higher ground. But you never know through sort of the middle to end of November, we could potentially see some stuff come to lower, le lower levels, even in southern England throughout the end of November. And just got to keep fingers crossed for that if you are a snow lover. But for the time being, the next week is looking quite fine and dry for many in the south. Maybe chilly temperatures at times and maybe some drizzle over Scotland. And again, it's beyond that where the uncertainty does kick in. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.